Syracuse and Johns Hopkins. 62nd meeting all time. Hopkins with a slight edge in the overall series. One that dates back to 1921. Mason Cohn wins the opening faceoff, and Syracuse goes to work on offense with Spolino. This is Jake Stevens, one of two impact transfers from Princeton, along with Sam English, who you'll see as well. And Stevens will invert against the short stick. Stevens feeding in front. It gets away, and the Hopkins short stick to midfield, giving this team a chance in transition. Hunter Jaronski slips. It's been raining quite a bit over the last 24 hours started last night it's dissipated over the last few hours but you also had three teams three games and six teams play on this field before Syracuse and Hopkins got on indeed and watching those prior contests there were players losing their footing in goal for Hopkins it is Chase Erlin a four-year starter at Cornell reunited with his old big red head coach Peter Milliman yeah, Peter Milliman was around for the early days of Chase Erlin. 2019, as a true freshman for Milliman, he was a starter up in Ithaca. Finn Thompson defended by Jaronski. Feet in front, behind the back shot, and a score. It's Christian Muley, the grad transfer from Lehigh. We're past 7 o'clock. Open up a can of... Or a copper cup, maybe. <laughs> oh, Moscow oh, Mule. Yeah. The lights are flashing. And Christian Mule now, if you watch the tape, he's been super creative in his fifth year. The grad transfer from Lehigh. You could play him outside as a feeder, but inside he's so smart with the lacrosse IQ in the wraparound. Losing his angle there, lefty. He knows if he goes BTP with Finn Thompson, the eyes up and the spot feed. That is the exact time you want to go behind your back if you're Christian Mule. And if you watch prior tapes, he did a similar shot against Army a couple weeks back. And he gives this offense really a second quarterback to take some pressure off of Joey Spolino. He's a chameleon. He's one of the top assist players in the country last year when Kevin Cassis was the head coach at Lehigh. He operated behind the cage a ton. Now he's that secondary thought. Owen Hiltz with the left hand. Big save by Erlin. Off the rebound, it's the freshman, Kilrain. He had it, lost it, and we're going to get a loose ball push against Hopkins. It'll stay with Syracuse. You know, we talk so much about Spillina against Scott Smith. The big chess match today is the midfield of Syracuse, a very deep unit. They could run six or seven guys against the Hopkins short stick defensive midfielders, maybe the deepest group in the country. They can run six or seven guys. Yes. This is Luke Roa. He had four goals in that Maryland game. Working on Patrick Deans, Hopkins top LSM. Stevens now has a short stick matchup. Jackson Raposo trying to stay with him. Stevens slips, angling toward the cage. Doubled, it's a great tripled, double. and what a takeaway, and it's Scott Smith off the ground. That is a perfectly timed double. It's going to go back to Syracuse. How about the play? Along the end line, I think it was Stevens who dislodged the ball, and that's a cause turnover. And this is now becoming an extended possession for the Orange. And that's what Jake Stevens does so well. He can play anywhere on the field. I say he's the college version of Zach Courier, who plays for the Water Dogs in the PLL. Put him anywhere on a lacrosse field. Mule feeding inside. Stevens had a great look, but missed the cage. One of the factors in this game, you look at Johns Hopkins, maybe as deep as any team in the country. One area where Syracuse may have a slight edge, possessions potentially with faceoffs. Yeah, and they run two guys with Mason Cohn and Johnny Mullins, the spectacular freshman. Spolina now the nation's leading scorer. Outside hammer by Roa, and Spolina's got the backup. Still plenty of time to shoot. You watch Aiton White, so two-handed, Anish, Luke Roa. When you watch him play the game of lacrosse in a half-field offense, you have no clue what hand he is. Feed in front, Mule on the doorstep denied. It comes back to Hiltz. There's that through pass he's made so popular. Spolina picked up by Deans. He'll give it up. A Syracuse team that's 5-2. The only losses in overtime. One to Maryland. One to Army. 
Johns Hopkins, lone loss in the opener to Denver. Bounce shot by Roa, flagged down as he hits the deck. And Syracuse will go with the extra man. Jamison Kester, the defensive coordinator for Hopkins, is super aggressive. I equate it to a defensive coordinator in football that will throw blitz after blitz on you. He slides so early. Sometimes you get in trouble because this Hopkins defense has been manned down now. It'll be the 27th time. They're pretty good in this specialty unit, though, holding teams to 38%. As a defensive unit, you want to hold teams under 40%. But this is the aggressive style of Kesterer's defensive philosophy. They are going to slide, especially when you have a short stick. They are sliding. The second you get into, you know, 10 to 12 yards, they're going. Last year, Syracuse had a dangerous EMO, and so much of it started with 77 hilts making that skip pass. Stevens too high, the backup to Syracuse. And the sophomore Michael Leo. Yeah, they had the most man up goals in the country a season ago, but they have not been clicking on all cylinders with all these stud players. Under 40%, Spolina whistles it wide. Early on, Syracuse has had some good looks, but they're missing the cage. Here is Hill to it, 14 man up assists a season ago. Thompson defended by the freshman, Kilrain. They play it to the wing. Erlen got a piece of it. And it feels like Hopkins has been on defense for most of these first five minutes. Erlen so battle tested. Hiltz. He missed the cage. I thought Erlen last week against Virginia was spectacular. He's a calming presence, the 60 year senior, 22 in black. Big reason why they're such a great clearing team, too, at 92%. Yeah, Virginia's vaunted ride gave this team little problems last week. Looking for Leo, and that's a turnover. Yeah, that's a good point, Anish, because Virginia likes to employ that full court press version of the ride in lacrosse. Syracuse a little softer here. Almost five minutes into the game, Syracuse has eight shots, but only two on goal. Hopkins. Still does not have a shot, period. And now they'll finally get their offense going. And you would imagine you want to give your defense a little breather oh, yeah. and you take your time. Well, when you do that, you give the ball to 23 in black behind Jacob Angelus, one of the primetime feeders, quarterback type player that makes everything run for this offense that John Crawley, second year coordinator, has been off the charts with in terms of their movement. Angelus' pass picked off by Will Mark. Mark's been 50% or better in the five Syracuse wins. He's been in the 40s in the two losses. No goalie in college lacrosse playing right now has more career saves. English, the Princeton transfer, accelerates up ahead. And a trail check from Hopkins to jar it loose. That was Brendan Avilas, the former Syracuse Orange. Yeah, that's where you see the middle of the field leadership and experience of Johns Hopkins. You know, you mentioned when you have five or six or seven options with the short stick defensive midfield position, every time you put a guy out there, it's full gas. Avilas last week made a couple of great plays one-on-one -on -one against Connor Schellenberger. He knows when he's on the field, he's going to get his pops, he's going to get his rest because they're so deep at that spot, but you just get incredible velocity in terms of the way that they run their their shorties. There is Grimes, but makes this Hopkins offense so tough to defend. Precise ball movement, almost positionless with their top six. Interchangeable parts. Angelus, though, is the head of the snake. He's their leading scorer using the pick from Grimes. Up top to Degnan. It's back to Grimes. Trying to get to that left hand. Shot and a score, and Johns Hopkins with its first tally. That's the freshman, Jimmy Ayers. They think he's got a chance to be a special one at Homewood and in Charm City. He was a player I mentioned to Coach Peter Milliman in our call this week because when Ayers stepped on Homewood, there was a bunch of alum who were speaking highly of this guy. I turned on the tape, and you know why. 
He is a spark plug, an incredible dodger, but showing you some creativity inside. His first step and his ability to go at defenders is the first thing you think of with four and black. But now he's learning to play off the ball in this seamless, positionless offense of John Crawley's. Everyone plays everywhere, Anish. And Peter Millen, Peter Millman was telling us that we're not worried about chemistry and mixing and matching because the system has worked. Their only loss was a game against Denver where Hopkins had a three goal lead with three and a half to go. Denver tied the game at the end of regulation with less than two seconds before winning in overtime. If Hopkins held on that day, we're talking about a team right now that is a unanimous number yes, one. Yes, without question. And you know, you talk offensively about all those pieces. The one constant though, I think when the offense is ever in trouble, you just give the ball to Angelus. Yep. He's your calming force. His head is always up. He's always making the right decision. Here is Mule. He's got the lone Syracuse goal. Watch how quick they go to support this matchup. Short stick matchup here. There's the slide. Hiltz skips it across off the stick of English. If that skip pass works off of a quick slide, it is a step down with time and room. Mule posting up. Wanted Leo. Another turnover for Syracuse. That's six turnovers already for the Orange, and give this Blue Jay defense credit. They caused three of them. Yeah, they're sliding with a ton of force. And against a Syracuse team that loves to pass, and if you turn on the tape, all these players are skilled and really fine skip passers, too. They can, they can make that through pass. They have to capitalize. They have to play clean if they want to be able to hang with this team that is maybe the hottest in the country. Unforced error by the Blue Jays. They wanted Dylan Bauer, the senior from Park City, Utah. The other piece to all this, too, Anish, is you don't want to negate the face-off advantage you have if you're Syracuse because you have Mason Cohn and you have Johnny Mullins. That is the one spot on the field right now that you could say is a distinct advantage for Syracuse coming into the day and what we're seeing early. Three for three on face-offs, but... Just a 1-1 game, 6.20 to go. First quarter here in Charlotte, North Carolina. Place that is quickly becoming a hotbed for lacrosse. Mule driven back out, gets free from his defender. That's Stabner, another Princeton transfer, flagged down. Delayed penalty on Hopkins. I'm feeling that a lot of these players are slipping and sliding. Like, you just don't feel like they're planting their foot and they're confident with their change of direction. Coach, what's on black? Black 28, interference, 30 second. I will get Stabner. He was on that final four team with Sam English and Jake Stevens. If Matt Madelon, the Princeton head coach, uh, is watching, he's probably thinking, yes. you can probably put together a top 10 team right now just on Princeton transfers. Oh, you have Stevens, English, Stavner, you have Vardaro. three guys at Michigan, Vardaro at Georgetown, a couple at Duke. Slusher at Duke. But Madelon's still winning. It tells you a lot about him as a coach. Another man up chance for Syracuse, 0 for 1 today. Stevens hesitates. Burt Whistle was the big man-up sniper last year. Hiltz shoots. Erlin got his stick on it. And it goes out of bounds, but it was kicked out by Syracuse. So Hopkins will get the ball back. That was a phenomenal save by Chase Erlin. I mean, effortless, too. Tracking an Owen Hiltz shot from that angle when he drops his stick low. We've seen him shoot high, low, so it's a hard one to track in terms of when you turn on the tape and you see his tendencies. There was no guessing out of Erlin, and he gobbled that one up. Erlin was sensational last week at Virginia. 16 saves in the win against the Cavs and really made some big stops in the second half. Contrast for Hopkins and Syracuse. Syracuse is not deep at the short stick defensive midfield position. Collison over to Melendez. He had a school NCAA tournament record nine points in a first round win against Bryant last year. Former Marquette 
Golden Eagle. Now Collison down the alley. Mark stonewalls him right at the crease. You see the strength and how easy it is for 16 in black to get underneath his defender. Almost effortless, but you got to can that if you're Collison. You're high, your stick's high, the goalie's guessing high. Just shoot it right at Mark's ankles. Take another look at this left side of your screen here. If it pops. Gets underneath, he just shows you how he's driving that left shoulder. That's one he's gonna watch and say, I should have scored that. Rowe wheels down the alley. He's picked up by the short stick of Vilas, his old teammate. Vilas had been Syracuse's top shorty the last couple of years. Roa wants the matchup of Vilas with great defense. And Spolina's got the backup for the orange. With the aggressive defense, it's going to be the Dodger, and it's going to have to be pass-pass. I don't think that there's going to be a ton of the initial pass off the Dodge open. Spolina using the pick and finds the back of the net. 2-1 Syracuse, Joey Spolina with his 22nd goal of the season to match his number. If you turn on the tape and you watch Spolina, his lacrosse IQ is off the charts. His head is always up. He has the creativity, but he also knows how to play the pick game. Hopkins ties it up with Ayers. And then the super sophomore Spolina with a teammate pick. He makes it count. Petro, Quint on the other side. Oh, yeah. Some great battles in the late 80s. I was a fan in the stands. Bird Stadium in 1989 as an eighth grader watching Gary and Paul Gade against Quint and Dave Petromala. And one of the best oh, games of all time. One of the best games of all time. And I was a complete lax rat by that time already. But it just took me even to another level. You grew up in a place, Yorktown, New York, which in many ways was the offshoot epicenter of this rivalry. Oh, yes. Yeah, you, you grew up in Yorktown and your idols weren't Michael Jordan and Joe Montana. It was the Nelson brothers or Billy Dwan and you wanted to be a Syracuse or a Hopkins lacrosse player. For me, it was Syracuse from a younger brother, Brian. He wanted to be like Quinn Kessnick. 3-1 Syracuse. That's two straight for the Orange. 2.50 to go in this opening quarter and if you're the Blue Jays right now, you just need the ball. Owen Hiltz gets the tally. I feel like when Owen Hiltz comes to the party and he's involved, this offense clicks to another level. It's interesting there. He got Erlin on the same shot where Erlin gobbled it up last possession. So he goes to his bread and butter lefty underhand, but he doesn't change the level. So maybe a guy like Erlin knows how good of a shooter Hiltz is. He's probably anticipating, since I saved the low, he's probably going to go high. Another face-off one. Here's Mullen. Syracuse going quickly, and that one skirts wide from the wing by the Orange. Johnny Mullen, the freshman face-off man from Massachusetts. He's only a freshman. Mark my words, in the next year or two, he will be at the top elite level nationally. He's got the build, he's got the athleticism, he has the stick skills with the new rules to make plays after a win. He checks every box, 36 and white. Stevens turned away by Erlin. Quinton Kilrain, the freshman who's forced his way into the Hopkins starting lineup. A one-time Syracuse commit. No wag the dog all the way downfield and Peter Millman says, we'll stop there and we'll That's call a, a timeout. Out. That's a great timeout. You have a freshman defender with the ball who was marvelous last week down in Charlottesville. Defended McCabe Millen. Top freshman in the country. Kilrain, one of the top rated defenders in the country. He just checks every single box like a Mullen in terms of his upside. He's got the range. He's got the strength. He's got some mean streak in him. Two twelve to go in this first quarter. Elsewhere in college lacrosse today, Notre Dame 
going to Ohio State, getting a 13-10 win against the Buckeyes. Loyola hung with Duke for about a half before the Blue Devils pulled away on the road in the second half. The Penn State-Cornell one was shocking. Yes. Penn State had that early loss to Colgate. They've been taking names since then. Well, they just beat Yale last week when they were down 9-2, and this game was never in doubt. They were dominant the entire game against Cornell. The shocker of all shockers, though, the Maryland-Brown game. Maryland comes in as a top five team and you know they're, they're clicking on all cylinders their only loss was Notre Dame they've beaten Syracuse up in the dome you think they're going to blow towards Brown who's 0-4 and Brown had some had ugly that losses game. Brown had some ugly yes. losses leading up to that this is what the top 10 looks like Hopkins sitting at number two Denver at 5-0 and and Denver remember has the Hopkins win Army has picked up a couple of big wins. They beat Rutgers, they beat Syracuse. Notre Dame has the Maryland win, and they have the loss as well, um, losing to Georgetown. You know what I love about this top 10? Five weeks ago before the season started, everyone thought it was <laughs> Notre Dame, Virginia, and Duke, and it's everyone else. Guess what? It's everyone else. It's everyone else. Right, we're into March now, but the February slate provided a ton of theater this year. It is a long season, but there's a sense of urgency, more so for Syracuse in this game. You look at what they've done under Gary Gate. He's trying to get this program back. They only have one win in 14 games against top 10 opponents since Gate took over. Yeah, that was Duke two seasons ago up in the dome. You feel like they're close, but close isn't good enough, right? You, you need validation. Grimes moves it over from the wing. It is Degnan. That is 37 straight games with a goal for Garrett Degnan, who's now tied to the Johns Hopkins record shared by the great Terry Reardon and the great Ryan Brown. There's been some amazing shooters in the left spot. Ryan Brown was a chameleon, can play both sides. Terry Reardon, and you think of all the great lefties that played at Johns Hopkins. Garrett Degnan, with his feet set, is darn right scary. He hammers the ball over 100 miles an hour. And watch his trajectory in terms of his release. He will change his levels. He will change where he shoots in terms of the location of the goal. So a guy like Will Mark has to stand in front of a Degnan shot. And it's not typical in terms of he does this every single time. He will spray it in a variety of ways. And if you're Syracuse, you cannot slide off of him. He's not the dodging threat. You can even put a short stick on him, but you have to shade him adjacent. Because if he sets his feet, it's good night. And if he gets to the left hand, goodbye. Procedure call on Tyler Dunn. Syracuse has won every faceoff. Here comes Michael Leo. Look at the slides, right? This defense is aggressive. Hiltz has a tally today, defended by a fellow 77, Hunter Jaronski. Smith came over to Shade. Over to Leo again, working on Bowden Zulik, reigning Big Ten Defensive Player of the Week. Five ground balls, four cause turnovers of Klockner last week. And between him, Smith, and Kilrain. Bouncer blocked. English tries to retrieve it. It'll stay in. You look at this unit. And the way that their close defense has really risen to the occasion. Thompson's got two helpers. English couldn't get anything on it. Zulik dislodged it, intercepted by Thompson. Syracuse off the scramble. That and they can't can hold happen. for one final shot. That can't happen if you're Hopkins because you're getting dominated at the faceoff X. Leo didn't have an angle. Now, this is a Hopkins team that, again, through six games, clearing at 93%, and they've done it against a heavyweight schedule. Now in transition, Deans all the way, Mark with the stop. Final ticks. A catapult up ahead, and Syracuse able to pick it, unable to pick it clean, and it'll be Hopkins' ball with 1.8. Peshko puts one on cage. Mark got a piece, it'll go as a save. And one quarter in the books. It's the Crown Lacrosse Classic here in the Queen City, Charlotte, North Carolina.
the Kings of Lacrosse, Hopkins and Syracuse, 20 combined national titles in the NCAA era, meeting his top 10 teams together for the first time in eight years. Hopkins last won a title in 2007, last got the championship weekend in 2015. Syracuse last won a title in 2009, hasn't been to champ weekend since 2013. For two programs that at certain points in their history could have taken their team picture on yes. Memorial Day weekend, that feels like forever. Well, that's why when you hear the statement, we're back, it just infuses an alumni base like Kyle Harrison, who's in attendance, one of the greatest of all time, checking out his all beloved, now. yeah, beloved Blue Jays. Look, Anish, at the end of the day, these fan bases just care more than everyone else. That's just the reality. The fan bases care, the schools care, the communities have always embraced lacrosse. It's a huge, huge deal on Saturdays in Baltimore around Homewood Field. It's a monster deal up in the Dome. It's their spring sport. They get media coverage and attention locally the way Division I basketball teams do at certain schools. How about the nice stick work by Stevens? Gets to the middle, draws the attention. Trail check, Brett Martin, Hopkins top shorty. Hertz comes back with it. Hopkins has had three or four great trail checks. Like once you think a Syracuse offensive player has penetrated the, the defense of the Blue Jays, they've been spectacular at getting behind the player with those trail checks, the timing of the trail checks. There is Burt Whistle, 49 career goals. Stevens, right hand free, fires. There's blocked. another one. And Erlin able to clean up. Ahead to Martin, errant pass, rolling toward the near sideline. It'll stay in bounds. Wet turf. Hopkins has to clean up their clearing game. Four for seven in the first quarter. A team that's one of the best in the country at 92% coming into the game. They've really struggled against a Syracuse team that's dominating at the faceoff X. They have to clear up that aspect of their game. Yeah, if you're Peter Milliman right now, you're saying, if we can even out the possession battle, this probably becomes a different game. Here comes Peshko, four goals against Virginia, saved by Mark. Good sign for Syracuse. Will Mark against Army and Maryland, the two top opponents the Orange have played, you know, wasn't at his best. So I guess they're gonna say that was not a shot clock reset. It didn't get a piece of Mark. Looked like a save for me, and if it didn't, hit his stick it hit the pipe i mean there that was blatantly to me a, a stop unless it hit a defender on the way but it looked like mark made that stop All right, normally a save or a ball that hits the pipe that is recovered by the shooting team shot clock resets to 60. here's collison big left hand mark stops this one and then quickly outlets up ahead Both of these goalies have been seeing some serious heat and have answered the bell. Mark is five out of seven. Erlin is four out of seven. Now Spolino wears that fabled number 22 worn by so many Syracuse greats, including his head coach, Gary Gate. Syracuse will do a lot to get some switches for Spalina, get a short stick or also hang the defense up. So the wing dodge, which makes the adjacent show defensively where it gets a hang position. Now Leo tried it, wanted Hilt. He couldn't control it. Zulik the other way. Now it's Deans in transition. He's got four career goals, but he gives it up. That last possession when Leo is driving, he has Spalina behind the cage. The Hopkins defense is showing. Spleen is going to get the ball, and he's going to be able to hang the defender up, pick his spots, allow the cutters to come. Got to get the ball to Spelina there. Ryan Evans now. They got English playing defense. Here comes Melendez. It's been a quiet start to the season, but Peter Milliman not concerned. He said Russell Melendez hasn't been forcing it. Here comes Hunter Chevette, and he ties the game. Hunter Chevette opened his Hopkins career as a freshman with back-to-back hat-tricks. The last Hopkins freshman to do that, you got to go back 
to Mike O'Neill back in 1975. Wow. And Chevette is a natural lefty attackman. Think Mac O'Keefe from Penn State, who plays for the Archers in the PLL. But right now, because of the seamless offensive approach by John Crawley and Peter Milliman, they'll run him through the box, which allows him to stay above goal line and get these opportunities on short six, not dodging them, Anish, but actually shooting off of that pressure. When you have a shorty against an elite shooter like Chevette, he gets his hands free way easier. Mullen against Logan Callahan. First face-off win for the Blue Jays. That's Callahan from Victor, New York. He's a pretty good face-off man who came out of Victor, New York, huh? Uh -oh. T.D. Erland, Chase's older brother. Grimes the skip, digging on the hammer. You cannot treat Garrett Degnan when he's on the lefty wing like anyone else. You need to press out and understand he's one pass away from this. If you're Caden Cole and that's the assignment you have, you need to understand that. Have a head on a swivel. You can't show that much inside. If you're 33 and white, you don't show that much inside when you have maybe the best left-handed shooter with time and room in the country. I mean, he is salivating there. He's marinating on the left side, saying, I can't believe all this help is inside right now to let me spray. Wings will get involved in this one. Alexo is going to get hit with a flag. This is going to be interesting. If there's intent, it could go over one minute, Anish. Are they going to look at two things, indirect, direct, or excessive and or flagrant? That applies to any hit to the neck and head area. And if it is indirect, it's non-releasable one minute. If it is a direct hit, according to the officials, two minutes. Something to note, both coaches agreed there would be no instant replay today. So we will not have replay in this game. This is a call where under circumstances when replay is available, you can look at it. The white, white number 48 cross check, direct head and neck, two minutes full time. That's what I thought. My initial reaction was it was not going to be a minute. There was going to be direct contact to the head, not indirect. And I think that's an easier call for the official also when you have that face off scrum, right? It's almost like a defenseless player there. That's the right call. So Johns Hopkins will have the man advantage for two minutes, seven of 17 with the extra man this season. See, the danger zone is when you have Chevette with Degnan, 34 in black and 40 in black. Both stretch shooters on the same side. Degnan's got 19 career man-up goals. Melendez, they've got Angelus camped up top. Blue Jays probing the perimeter. Hunter Chevette, nine goals on the season, one today. Melendez back to Angelus. Crease feed, Degnan hit the crossbar. The rebound comes back to Melendez. New 60. Still plenty of time on the extra man. Chavette had his shot altered. Syracuse with the man down does almost a complete line change defensively. Yes. It's five new players who come in and all they do is play man down. In isolation, it's a great concept. Melendez, a little hesitation. Now Angelus. Dagnon. Camped on that right wing. Can they get it to him with time and room? They did. In isolation, it's a great concept because you get more players engaged. Your practice tempo and the ability to know you're going to get on the field. Heightened awareness. The problem is after the penalty, you have guys that you probably aren't your premier cover guys stuck in the field. Melendez with a bouncer. Mark got a piece of it. 38 seconds now on this extra man. So if you hold, Riley Figueres won't be on Jacob Angelus. That's, that's the, the danger zone. 
Yeah, then you can't sub out when it's six on six, but you're trying to get the stop when you're down a man. Melendez over to Degnan. Chevette spins it back to Angelus, now operating from X. Chevette high to low. Mark gobbles it up. Low to high. <laughs> Excuse me. Jordan Beck up ahead to Roa. Syracuse clears and will go back to even strength. That's a big penalty kill for the Orange. Monster. And the belief of that clean unit that comes in to make the stop. You look up and on the sideline, there's, there's a reason to celebrate. Owen Hilt set a hat trick against Hopkins last year. That was a Blue Jay win, however. Rose got the short stick, Jaronski. Row off the invert. Plays catch with Hiltz. Now Spolina goes back to X. It comes to Stevens. Spolina guarded by Smith. Here's the double. Ball's on the ground. And we're going to get a whistle. Might be a loose ball push on somebody. And now it's getting heated. Spolina and Smith. It's a rivalry. Prior to the flags in the chirping, that was an incredibly timed double, right? Smith is standing his ground on goal line extended. And the slide help from the back side. See the back of the helmet? That's your cue to go. See here, he posts up. Look at that slide help right there by Sululik. Then the aftermath. They'll always get the retaliation, Nish. Yeah, they'll try to clean up this mess. Spolina doing time, and then it looks like Melendez, the in-home. But why isn't that Smith? Well, did they just give Melendez full time for a hold? Yeah, take another look here. There's no hold here. That's a great double. I think the hold was earlier. Yeah, the hold and then it been was earlier. The double, the ball goes down. And the ball's out, so it's a And loose. then you see Smith yeah. kicks the stick. Spolina doesn't like it, and so they get into it. That easily draws the flag. Gary Gate will Call a timeout. The question is. And I think Peter Millman's trying to get an explanation. Yeah. If this is a full time penalty on Melendez, if it's just a hold, that's not a full time penalty. Yeah, if it was unsportsmanlike, it could be full time served. But just the hold, to your point, no. But my question, too, that was Spillina and Smith. Unless they're not going to flag Smith, you're going to get the second guy, as we yep. see quite often. Scott Smith, uh, honorable mention, All-American last year. We saw what he did in the quarterfinals where he held Pat Kavanaugh to one point. Scott Smith has become an elite defender nationally. Because you look at Johns Hopkins' schedule, week in and week out, it's one top 10 team after another, and his assignment every single week is to defend everyone's alpha. They opened with Denver. They played at Georgetown. They went on the road. They beat North Carolina. They beat Virginia on the road. This is their third straight ACC opponent that they are playing away from Homewood Field, technically neutral site. But just looking at the crowd here, I'd venture to say there's more Syracuse fans than Hopkins fans. Yes. And I think the in-home, Melendez is being the player who's serving it because it's a conduct foul on the team. It's a conduct foul on the team. It's not Melendez who made the penalty here. 
So anytime it's a team foul, you're in home serves. That's why Melendez is in there. I'm still and that would curious. explain why yeah. it's full time. Yes. They just didn't explain that. So both teams will play five on five. It'll be Syracuse ball. What's important with five on five offense when you have more spacing? Well, you could go open set here. And the beauty of it is, is Jamison Kester's base defense and their slide rotation is predicated on six players, too. So your slide rotations are different. But I think it gives your midfielders way more room to operate. If you go open set, you're going to force an adjacent slide as opposed to the crease. Throw a mark by Martin. Erlin gets a piece to turn it away. Rolling toward midfield. Two on one ground ball for Hopkins. Kicked up ahead. Then it comes back. And it's Jaronski off the ground. Unsettled chance for the Blue Jays. Bauer. Turbos. One more. Degnan. Doorstep saved by Mark. Mark's been on. Chase Erlin's been on. We have a goalie battle, Anish. Degnan guarded by Caden Cole. Yeah, that's the spot you don't need to worry about Degnan too much. Worry about him when he doesn't have the ball. Because they're going to get it to him with time and room. And you saw his ability to absolutely have the ball screaming out of his stick. Melendez going to work on the shorty. Melendez slams on the brakes over to Degnan. Bauer plays it up top. They love using Angelus all over the field. He's not just the next guy. Peshko, that one hit the pipe. Resets the shot clock at 60. Bauer's speed demands a pole. And he gets one from Riley Figueres, the redshirt freshman. Highly recruited, highly rated. Missed all of last season with a lower body injury. Angelus now against the short stick. Slide's got to come. You watch Angelus, too. I love how his head is always up surveying the defense. No slide yet. Angelus, the skip pass. Now Bauer. Working on Vinny Trujillo. Flag down. Hopkins will go man up. Degnan, lefty free. And the Blue Jays will have their power play unit back on. Caden Cole. We're going to get 33 white on the hold here. Got him a little high, too. Dylan Bauer, who's got the turbo jets, as you mentioned. The equalizer here, though, for Syracuse is actually the turf. It's slowing a guy like Bauer down. Neither team has scored on the extra man so far. Dagnon is an assassin. If he scores here, it'll be his 20th career EMO goal. Angelus up top. Dagnon missed the cage. Boy, he's been getting some looks in what is his sweet spot for yes. a natural lefty. You know, we talk about the wet turf being the equalizer on a guy like Dylan Bauer. Degnan just needs to plant his feet. He's not trying to <laughs> plant a, a, a foot and separate as a Dodger. You have to extend out to him. Don't treat him the same as everyone else. One of the great goal scorers in the history of Hopkins lacrosse. Coming off back-to-back 40-goal -back seasons. Bounce shot. That one misses. They're playing with fire. Like, like, he's getting his shots here. Like, Syracuse needs to regroup, and they need to identify where Degnan is because he will make them pay. I mean, you think of some of the great shooters that have worn the Syracuse orange or the Hopkins blue. Degnan's coming to the party. And, and Johns Hopkins with a one-goal lead on Syracuse here in Charlotte, North Carolina at the Crown Lacrosse Classic. It is a top-10 matchup that is oh so close to potentially being one versus two. Absolutely.
J.J. Silstrop, though, in the first week of February, made his presence felt with four of the last goals for Denver. The Pioneers were 13th that date. Now they're number one. Maryland went up to the Dome in a classic in mid-February. Stamos with the winner, the short stick D midi, and heartbreak once again. For Cuse. They have the two top five overtime losses. This could be one versus two, Anish. Yeah, Denver, again, was down a goal with less than two seconds to go in regulation. Got the equalizer against Maryland. Replay looked at a potential goal by Syracuse. The call on the field was no goal. Replay held that up. That was in overtime. Maryland then won. But when Syracuse fell asleep on defense and against Army, Syracuse had a chance in OT on an empty net. Could not score. Here comes Bauer. He missed the cage. Mark sprang out. They were trying to get it to Degnan. Shot clock down to four, down to three, and that turnover probably did Hopkins some good. It'll be interesting to see the way that Syracuse attacks now because we've seen the really aggressive approach by Hopkins defensively. They're sliding before the Syracuse offensive players are demanding a slide, right? They are forcing Syracuse to move the ball quickly, but that's kind of Syracuse's strength. You know, I, I love the style of Jamison Kresser in, in terms of how he always plays aggressive, but against this team that passes so well, is playing that aggressive the call? Well, it's worked so far, Syracuse has not scored since the 250 mark of the opening quarter. They turn it over here. Orange scoreless in the second quarter. They had a 3-1 lead. It's been three straight by the Blue Jays. Thompson's got a couple of helpers. Picked up by the short stick, Jaronski. Part of maybe the best rope unit in all of college lacrosse. English over to Leo, the backup to Syracuse and Spolina, who's been quiet in this first half. Here's the matchup. Here comes a pick by Muley. You get the switch now. So now Mule Syracuse the has the He pays the price, but it was well worth it because now Joey Spolina has the short stick. Hopkins will be sliding quickly. Cat and mouse Spolina feeding in front. His intended target whipped. Leo is down. Blue Jay long sticks in there. Popped into the air. Dean's got a stick on it. Shovels it ahead. Angelus missed it. Peshko had it. Figueres knocked it away. It somehow stays in bounds. It's a scramble. Jaronski looking for Kilray, and he gets destroyed by Dewan. A flag goes up. Now, Billy Dewan plays with some ferocity. And you talk about a guy whose family is a big part of this rivalry. Dad was a Yorktown guy, played at Johns Hopkins. Longtime Dave Petromala assistant for the Blue Jays. Billy Dwan is an incredible coach and friend of mine who spent so many years at Hopkins. White, number 35, unnecessary roughness, one minute foul. The Dwans, when you think of Billy Dwan, Billy Dwan the third's father, who you were mentioning, played so physical at Johns Hopkins. His uncle, Robbie Dorr, who played at Johns Hopkins, so physical. They're going to make you pay every single time. His, his uncle, Matt Dwan, who played at Loyola, it's in their DNA. I think of those great Hopkins defenses. You had Dewan and Petro back there, and then Kesnick didn't stop talking. <laughs> you see the physicality of Billy Dwan the third, too, and if you know the family, they have a hockey fighting library that rivals any <laughs> family hockey fighting library out there. Man up chance here for Hopkins, trying to get it inside. Chevette can't get the shot off. Degnan spins it to Collison. Hunter Chevette again, and Mark is right there. The freshman telegraphed his move. You know, when you lay the boom like Billy Dwan the third, you're sending a message to this rivalry, but also when you come across the middle, you're going to feel it. Remember, you can go over and back in the first 20 seconds of the shot clock. 
Syracuse has been successful finding switches off the pick with Spelina. And a lot of times when he gets that shorty matchup, every team is so quick to slide that he can find spots and become an easy feeder behind the cage because all eyes are on him to support the matchup. Neither team has scored on the man up. 0 for 5 combined. Hopkins 0 for 3. Syracuse 0 for 2. Both goalies have been terrific in this first half. Low scoring game. It hasn't been a slow paced game. It's been sloppy. A lot of missed passes. Knockdowns. Like we, we haven't seen a clean version offensively really from either team. A part of it, you're waiting around to play all day. And let's be honest, you have three games prior to this on the same field. Nobody going into today was quite sure when the game would actually start when you take the field. Well, we were kind of going back and forth <laughs> with, with our yeah. own guesses. Would you have 702? My second guess was really close, but our producer John Kettering made me stick to my first guess, which was 730. 730. When I talked to Gary Gate when they were practicing yesterday, he thought 8 o'clock. <laughs> and he knows a thing or two about how long games could go and, and being behind a, a women's game, too, which sometimes can run, you know, 2.30, 2.45. Yeah, the folks here, led by Chris Schiller, have really put on a terrific event for many years. The Crown Lacrosse Classic continues to draw top teams. The last time Peter Millman was here, for the Crown Classic 2020, Cornell, Penn State, Jeff T had the game tying goal. Angelo Petrakis won it. And then after that game, everything shut down and the season was canceled. It was the last game before COVID canceled sports. I remember watching that. I think you were on the field watching it, weren't you? I was you? there live. It was uh, not far from here. It wasn't played at this stadium. Here's Angelus. About a second differential, game clock and shot clock. Melendez on the run. Degnan looking for his third. 4.3 on the game clock, three seconds on the shot clock. And a low scoring first half. Peter Milliman wants a timeout. Well, Denver drew something up at 1.7, so what does Hopkins draw up here? Angeles, marked by Alexo. Final ticks. Angeles, time runs out. And we go to halftime. Syracuse jumped out to a 3-1 lead. Hopkins closed the first half with three straight, holding Syracuse without a goal in the second quarter. But hang on. Are they putting time back on the clock? The horn sounded, but the players are still on the field. And the clock is showing triple zeros right now. So they've added a tenth of a second. No huck, huck it the entire length of the field. Sam Alexo. Alexo heaves it down just a bit outside. Now Gary Gate wants an explanation. Yeah, so the issue seems to be the horn blew before clock time had expired. Take a look here. Left side of your screens, the game clock. A shot clock violation before the game clock expires, but the horn sounds before both of them. Yeah, there was a second differential. Halftime coming up. Big win against a team in Stony Brook that beat Syracuse up in the dome earlier in the week. I didn't see the same kind of footing issues when the women were playing in the prior game. This game, though, these players are slipping and sliding all over this track. Mason Cohn, the Division Three transfer from Tufts. Facing off against Logan Callahan. Callahan moved early, and here comes Cohn. Played hockey and lacrosse at Tufts. This is the first time he has spent a whole year focusing on just lacrosse. I was talking to him yesterday, and Jake Stevens and Joey Spolina were standing by, and they were laughing. They couldn't believe it. 
Here comes Finn Thompson over to Hill, slow to high. Erland got a piece. You think about Cone, he's not facing off for some no name program. He's facing off <laughs> yeah. for Syracuse as the number one guy. And again, he was mostly a hockey player growing up. Well, you know what that tells you, though? There's a lot of tread on the tire with Mason Cone. You have a one two punch with Johnny Mullins, too. So if Syracuse can figure a way to get some wins against quality opponents, those guys will be fresh in May if there's a playoff potential run. Good ball movement. Hiltz missed the cage. And Thompson will dig it out for Syracuse. So Thompson, who's got two assists, doing a lot of initiating today. As Hopkins' close defense has put the shackles, for the most part, on Mule and Spolina. Hiltz had a good feed, but no shot there. Still plenty of time to shoot. Here comes Mule. There's that well-timed slide. Zulik that time came over. Got an open man right on the crease. Shot and a score. It is Joey Spolina tying the game at four. I've talked to a lot of people about Joey Spolina in terms of his lacrosse IQ. He doesn't have to be the guy that pulls it out and tells everyone in the stadium he's dodging. He's so good off ball. Understands spacing, shot location, and faking a goalie. This is patented Owen Hiltz. Skip passer extraordinaire. To on the doorstep, Joey Spelina. A lot of people think quarterback Dodger. He has that off ball element. Get him involved as a guy who could finish inside. First goal in almost 20 minutes for Syracuse. Now you gotta have a variety of ways to get a guy like Spelina involved because not all the time is he gonna own a one-on-one -on -one matchup against a guy like Scott Smith, but he has the lacrosse IQ to beat players off ball. And there's passers around him. There's Jackson, Burt Whistle. Row up, spinning around. Dusting Jaronski, finding Mule. Make it. Take it, lacrosse. When you're really aggressive on defense, a lot of times, Anish, you want to support the Dodger. You want to support that matchup. Luke Rowe is the Dodger. The support, look at all the eyes of the Hopkins defense. They're all upfield. All Cam Mule has to do is stand his ground. He has the seam already. You see him kind of itching for the ball because the eyes of the defense are on Roa. That's when a, an aggressive defense can come back to haunt you. You're so concerned about the support. Christian Mule. A lot of Mule's out there too, right? <laughs> Did we call him Cam, his we brother? Call him Cam. Cam played at Duke. I've mixed those guys up and I've known them for so long. And not only phenomenal lacrosse players, incredible teammates. Yep. Cam was a favorite in the locker room for Duke for many years. Graduated in 2022. And Christian on his fifth year from Lehigh. And Johnny on the spot tonight with two beautiful goals. Here comes Hiltz. Three in a row for Syracuse. They're scoring, they're winning faceoffs, they're taking it back downfield and scoring again. And they've got Johns Hopkins milling in retreat right now. Do you know if you're a Syracuse fan, you're worried about Degnan getting his touches? If you're a Hopkins fan, you're watching the way that this offense is matriculating and finding spots. Who's the player on Syracuse that's getting these step downs? It's Owen Hiltz. 77 can make you pay. To Gary Gate. But how do you beat an aggressive defense, Anish? It's with passing and kind of lulling a defense to think that you're going to the cage as a Dodger, but it's a passer in 10. Johns Hopkins finally gets the ball. Syracuse had won 10 out of 12 faceoffs prior to that last one. Mullen, the freshman, had taken it. Now the Blue Jays will get into their settled set. Peshko out there with Collison and Bauer. 
Bauer, Angelus, Melendez, those guys will yo-yo from midfield to attack. A lot of these pieces on the top six interchangeable. Melendez over to Degnan. He's the missing piece, I think, tonight. He's getting a short stick on him every time, 31 and black. He has to maximize these matchups. Matt Wright, the UNC transfer, former All-American a few years ago, was on Degnan. Here's Collison. Puts one on Cage, stings the corner. This guy's a freshman last year. Scored 26 goals. Since 1980, the only freshman midfielders at Hopkins who scored more goals in a season, Joel Tinney and Del Dressel. Wow. I mentioned the open that'll shoot right through you. He's a Canadian from Ontario. He's 6'4", 225. He kind of has an old school American north-south dodging aspect to his game. Doesn't need to go underneath like a lot of Canadians. He just soaks the body pressure and he can shoot through you. He's such an intriguing prospect because a lot of times Dodgers and initiators need separation to get a goal. He doesn't. He's so strong, he shoots through you. And on a righty goalie, that thing just stung the opposite pipe. How about Cohn? Turbines out of the ambush. Another faceoff won by the Orange. Now Spolino waits for Smith, gets it to Stevens. Trying to maneuver on Deans. Good recovery. Rowe is going to run out of the box. So Christian Muley is behind the cage. They've been short sticking him. And they're some. leaving Cohn out there, which means Callahan is out there for Hopkins. Cohn's going to set the pick. Spelina uses it. Now Callahan runs off. Spelina, that one is saved by Erlin, and now Cone will run off, and both teams will have their personnel. It's a smart move by Syracuse Why? because Cone is is more athletic than Callahan. He's he's more comfortable with the the ball and his stick, and you could trap a guy like Callahan, where you have other options. And if you go back to the faceoff X, you have a fresh Johnny Mullins waiting. Rowe has been a catalyst. Spelina chased by Zulik. Spelina, that inside roll wasn't there. Triple teamed. That means somebody's open. Flag down. Hills, crease feet, Stevens dunk. There's something very subtle here I want you to watch, Anish. Watch when Jake Stevens catches the ball. There's a slight hesitation in his fake. He knows that if he continues to move in that same direction, he's going to get the goalie, Erland, to go with him. Spelina understands the crease in that location, not stepping in. And there's the through pass extraordinaire once again to his Canadian mate, Jake Stevens. He catches this ball, he continues, and then he throws the fake. That is an elite goal scoring inside finisher in Jake Stevens. We'll be watching him in the PLL this summer. Yes, he's going to be playing professional lacrosse for a long time. And you get a chameleon of a midfielder play him on wings. They didn't have him in the West Point Army game, right? If they have Jake Stevens in an overtime game where he's so significant in terms of the way he impacts the game on the wings on faceoffs and in transition, scoring goals. Faceoff won that time by the junior Callahan. Hopkins has yet to put a shot on goal in this quarter. Almost five minutes in. Grimes has a couple of helpers. He's got Trujillo, the short stick. Little two-man game with Angeles. Syracuse recovers on the big little. Figueres jarred it loose. And Hopkins still without a shot on cage. We've been praising Hopkins defensive slides. That's the best slide I've seen from Syracuse tonight in terms of Grimes coming up field, not understanding the backside pressure of that slide. It was timed. And that first midfield of Thompson, English, and Leo, who's got the ball for Syracuse. Thompson against Raposo. They wanted Mule. Good idea by Spolina. Bad execution. I'm talking to Joey Spolina yesterday. He understands when you wear 22, 
in the age of social media when you play at Syracuse you're going to be in the crosshairs and you know, he laughed about it I said hey you get a lot of stuff yeah <laughs> thrown your way but listen part of it he knows it comes with the territory when that's a failure to advance they couldn't get it across that's where a soft ride can really frustrate a team that's clear because you think you have so much time yeah. and then they start jumping you when you're in between the restraining box and the midfield line so Syracuse kind of just goes soft to hard right there once the clock is in their favor in terms of clearing now Peter Milliman was yelling that Michael Leo was on the field when he should not have been and the officials missed it that might have been an offsides on Syracuse I think Syracuse right now they're having success when some of their midfielders and players from up top are dodging with the intent to pass Spolina feet in front push from the back shot and a score it's Mulay again and they are in sideline juiced Christian Mulay is a gamer he's got ice in his veins scored the tying goal against Maryland up in the dome to force that game into overtime it's the ride it's the relentless approach that gives this Syracuse offense another opportunity and Christian Mule with his third of the game he's been so strong inside I'll tell you what when he gets back up to Long Island this summer Uncle Ray is going to be feeding him some chicken cutlets with this game Hopkins came into the game clearing at 93 percent today below 65 percent uncharacteristic Cohn wins the face off tries to play it to the wing Spolina able to retrieve Hopkins using that sideline as an extra defender Stevens dusting his man he's Da Vinci and cleats Stevens all the way to the rack trail check by Deans loose ball near the crease Smith has it and gets it back to Earl a nice play by Scott Smith the All-American Here comes Kilrain. Dagnon back to McDermott. He's a two way midi. If you're Hopkins, the options here. You have Angelus, who's your conductor, your quarterback. But this guy, Collison, on a shorty, it's green light all day long. Angelus only one assist today. He's Hopkins' leading scorer. Peshko, quiet after a four-goal outing at Klockner last week. Bowers got some shake. Park City, Utah cashes in. Dylan Bowers pretty two-handed. He's also as quick as a hiccup. And on a wet field, Finding his footing has been tough. Not this time, though. You see the acceleration, the way that he gets the defender to bite. Watch his right plant foot here. Once he does this, the hips just completely open up, and it is go time. And Nick Kakemo that time lost his footing, and Bauer, too fast, you're not going to recover. It's the strong plant foot. He sizes the defender up, he squares the defender up, but that hard plant foot with the right gets Kakemo to go one way, and he doesn't have the footing to match hips. A loose ball hold against Syracuse, so Callahan has done a nice job at least mucking it up a little bit when he's been in there against Cohn and Mullen. That's a great point. We're seeing some adjustments all over this field. One on the face-off X that you mentioned with Callahan. We see offensive coordinator Pat March for Syracuse employing way more passing in the offense, less dodging. What are the adjustments offensively right now for this Hopkins offense? Well, they've got Angelus on the short stick English. Feed in front, Peshko whiffs. Got to be careful there, Anish. If Angelus has a shorty and he's not beat, when you slide to him early, his eyes are always up. He's going to find someone on the doorstep. It goes to Syracuse. Alexo has 11 goals, and they're going to get English for trying to use his hand. 
for using his hand. And now a quick restart. How about the trail check? Mule knocks it away. Peshko was not looking. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Now they're going to blow the whistle. Offsides. He thinks he had someone back, Gary Gate. You know Mule went over. But that's okay as long as you exchange here. Let's see if we could get another look at this. Left side of your screen. Mule, you see him hustling. He goes over. Yeah, it looked like Carter Rice threw the substitution box. Now, we couldn't see the other end of the field how many guys were down there, but that Gary Gate was pleading the case. Here comes Bauer. Carter Rice defending him. Trujillo driving Degnan to his right hand. Degnan spins him around and makes it 8 7, a hat trick for Garrett Degnan. He's feeling it. Six year seniors balling. We know about him from the outside stretching the defense. Garrett Degnan is 6 4. Vinny Trujillo is about 5'9", so he gets into the body, but this is a sweet move. Thinking that he's going upfield potentially to pass or shoot, gets the defense of Trujillo to bite, and all the eyes and the support's going upfield. So once he beats Trujillo, there's no help. And you saw Trujillo was playing the scouting report. He yes. was overemphasizing lefty, lefty, the left. Lefty, lefty, lefty. Left, left, left. And Oh, Degnan pulled a veteran move on him. But what that fake did, Anish, he, he got the entire defense to shift upfield, so once he got underneath, there was no support. Callahan went early. Another face-off to Syracuse. One goal game. Oh, Hopkins this season, they banked wins against Georgetown, North Carolina, and Virginia. They played arguably the toughest schedule in college lacrosse. They've got one of the if not the best resumes even with the one loss for Syracuse a five and two it's a much improved team the close losses to Maryland and Army but right now there's nothing on the Syracuse resume that plays on selection Sunday no and you're running out of these non-conference opportunities right you have Cornell down the road you have Delaware still got the ACC but the bulk of your games, because of renovations to the Dome, a front-loaded schedule, they're yeah, they going to be on the road straight. the rest yeah, of the way. They're going to be. This is the first time Syracuse has played outside of Central New York. Erlin stops the shot. That looked like a just standard save, but that was actually beautiful. Like, he played the angle. He didn't bite, because when you're dealing with the Canadian, they're going to move you pipe to pipe. And then he made that save across his face on Sammy English. This game has always had intensity, but the stakes feel different this year. They do. Because of the preseason hype, right? The magazine covers. Back. We're back. Here comes Ayers, the speedy freshman, out of the box. Him and Bauer both out there can create matchup problems for the Blue Jays. Ayers over to Degnan, and that one hums just wide. The way that this offense is working tonight, I would probably put more of number four in black out there. I think he could beat his man. He could own a matchup. He started on attack in the fall, and Ayers ties the game with the outside howitzer, eight up in the Queen City. Hopkins returned this season their top 11 point scorers. Getting a freshman on the field after the six year senior Chase Earl and gobbles one up. It's a daunting task. Who are you going to replace? Whose minutes are you going to take? Jimmy Ayers doesn't care. He is maximizing every opportunity. And if you flash too far to him, watch how he will change direction. 
Right there, he didn't have to. He had all the time in the room to set his feet. But this kid is going to be a star. Top 25 recruit coming out of high school and you know, really made a name for himself in that Carolina game where he had a couple of goals. He's got two today. We're tied at eight. Hopkins has responded after a 5-1 Syracuse run, three straight by the Blue Jays. Here's Burt Whistle. 49 career goals, zero assists. Roa up high. He's on the Carcaterra meal plan. <laughs> he eats. I knew you were going he there. He eats. Uh, I played with too many good passers. Inside roll. We're going to get a flag. It's amazing how he kept that ball on a stick. Erlin, another save. Smith pokes it away. Penalty coming on Hopkins. Spolina will reset. He's got a short stick matchup. He wants to clear out. Feed on the doorstep. Another goal for the Orange. And that ends a 3-0 run by Johns Hopkins. You get ways to get 22 the ball. Doesn't have to be the one-on-one -on -one matchup. He's got the lacrosse IQ, and he knows he has a free play here with a penalty that was called. The Orange does a remarkable job in terms of keeping possession. And there's Luke Roa. He's the most two-handed midfielder in the country. Another stop by Erlin. These goalies, specifically Erlin in the third quarter, he has made some nasty stops. 11 saves for Chase Erlin. A couple of years ago, this guy was playing on Memorial Day in the cage for Cornell. And if you go back to that 2022 season, it was actually a game against Syracuse at the Carrier Dome. He struggled early. Yep. Connor Busick pulled him, was pulled again the following week. He was a big question mark, turned it on in the second half of a game against Princeton late that year. It was a high-scoring game. And then he was sensational in the first three rounds of the NCAA tournament, better than 60%. So battle-tested. I had to get used to him in these shorts, though. You remember those big, baggy Sweatpants. sweats? Like the triple XL sweats? They were in the South now. Hopkins. Looks like they're in a zone. See the hesitation by Owen Hiltz there. You got the defense to commit. Overextended, and then the step towards the middle. Hiltz is a zone buster, Rowe is a zone buster. Finn Thompson is a zone buster. Oh, they were, that was a man up opportunity, I believe. Man down, zone defense, same principles. Find an overload, spin the rock, find your wing shooters. This is big for Finn Thompson. He was a 42% shooter as a freshman. He struggled through about three, four games this season. Finding his groove is critical for the long-term success of this offense. What you love about that shot too, Anish, is that he's so relaxed when he's on that right wing. And he dips his stick low and in one motion he stings it high on Erlen. You almost think he's a passer from that wing just by his body language. The ball's spinning around and then all of a sudden, bam. What's the big adjustment that Pat March, Syracuse's offensive coordinator, made in the second half? I think it's the passing. I think he realized in the first half, the slide rotations for the defense of Johns Hopkins, so aggressive, so quick. So I think what he's doing here, Michael Leo has the ball. He's going to give all the Hopkins defenders the reason to believe that he's going to the rack as a goal scorer. But he knows they're going to slide so early. So the midfield, specifically from up top, they've had a lot of success dodging from up top and feeding inside. They haven't had a ton of success dodging from behind and feeding the crease. 
40 seconds on the game clock about a 12 second differential between game and shot clock and Leo will hold. Want to tack around 10 to 15 seconds here. Here he comes against Raposo. Help coming from Smith who picks him up on the switch. Back to X, Spolina against Zulik. Four to shoot, three to shoot, two to shoot. Leo behind the back, does it count? It does, Michael Leo, Sports Center, top 10. Michael Leo has guts. If you watch the Syracuse Maryland game, he wanted the rock at the end of a game. Dove through the crease. It was a goal mouth violation. It went to replay. There's no replay in Charlotte. This backhand shot is counting. And he puts a lot into that one. Watch how he leverages his body, catapults almost towards the cage, and in the same motion goes behind the back, putting everything into this shot. Spelina understands the shot clock in terms of where it sits. Michael Leo knows how to make it count. And both coaches, both coaches agreed that they would not have instant replay for this game. Talk about the lacrosse IQ of a Joey Spelina. Understanding time and shot. Clock. Here comes Dunn. Final seconds, wing shot save, Will Mark. Catapults it, downfield. And Smith that time getting into it with Spelina again. Those I don't think they like each other. Have been jawing all game. Spelina got flagged in the first half. We go to the fourth quarter. Hopkins, the number two team in the country. Down by three to Syracuse. that are on college rosters. The parity and the level between teams. When we were talking about the top 10 earlier, there's there's eight teams that could win a national title this year. Back in the day, there was what, two to three maybe? Legitimate? Yeah, there was that run about 20 years ago where every championship weekend had three of the four in the group of Syracuse, Hopkins, Virginia, and Princeton. Yes. I mean, you could book it before yep. the season started. Maybe you got an outlier. Yeah, that's but not the three case. of those four were going to be there at the end and things have changed and the sport is better when Hopkins and Syracuse are in the national picture but the sports also a lot better now that we have so many other programs that have come to the party Syracuse has dominated the battle at the faceoff X Michael Leo and a highlight worthy behind the back goal with the shot clock expiring late in the third. Here comes English down the alley. And he beats Erlen over the shoulder. And Syracuse has its largest lead of the game, 12-8. This is a terrific shot by Sammy English. I think he's going to one of the pipes on this. But he actually goes directly over Erlen's head. You see a dip of his own head, right? He dips his head a little bit. And then the ability to get this back. Continuing upfield as much as he can. That is next level body control too, because the hardest thing when you're cutting down that angle, Anish, is to not allow yourself to go east-west, to stay north-south as much as you can to keep that angle, and that's what Sammy English did. Another face-off to Cohn. You think about what guys like Brian Tevlin and Chris Fake meant to Notre Dame last year. Championship pedigree from Yale. Guys like Jake Stevens, who's got the ball now, and Sam English. These guys played for some pretty good teams at Princeton. Two years ago, English was a 30-goal scorer, the highest scoring midfielder on a Princeton team that got to championship weekend. And you're also not mentioning what they do in between the lines. Both Stevens and English at Princeton at one point in time were short stick defensive midfielders. Then you throw the stats that you just mentioned on top of that, they are complete midfielders. That allows Gary Gate the flexibility to play them two ways. 
Here comes Roa all the way. Big save. Erlin. Rebound picked up by Roa. Good awareness of Roa to understand that's a reset of the shot clock. If you're Syracuse, you want to get into the flow. Use some time here and make sure that you're going after this defense that from a pacing standpoint doesn't look like they did in the first half in East. They were running around like their hair was on fire in that first half. Yeah, big difference in the first half. About half of Syracuse's shots were on goal in the third quarter. 91% of their shots on goal. Stevens against Avilas, couple of transfers. Avilas played for Syracuse the last few years. Mule spins it back, flag down. Stevens inside, body save Erland. Hilts on the rebound, another save. And now we get the penalty. Chase Erland, yeah. mark those down yes. two gargantuan saves. He's been incredible. Some big time stops. How about the follow up by Hilts, too? Number 10, hold. 30-second foul. The 30-second extra man for Syracuse. <laughs> Stevens goes to the rack. That's a hold. Stopping his forward progress. That's Avilas, who played at Syracuse a year ago. That's one unbelievable save. The follow-up by Hilts, and the second one hits the pipe. You want action? We'll give you action. Neither team has scored with the man advantage today. Both teams 0 for 3. Spolina from up top. Hiltz, 14 man up assists last year. This man down unit's packing it in. Who's the outside shooter for Syracuse? It's well, going to be hard to get it could inside. Be that guy. And this will be inbounds. Hilt saved it. I think they'll say it went out of bounds. They signal for a quick restart. Syracuse goes extra man again. Hopkins is daring them to beat them from the outside. They have belief and faith in Chase Erland to gobble anything up from the outside. But they're packed in. If you're a Syracuse offensive player, who's the stretch shooter that can solve it? Peshko against Rice. Jaronski, nice dodge. Bounce shot, score! Fifth career goal for Hunter Jaronski. Talk about versatile. He's played with the long pole and the short stick in his Hopkins career. He's a tough guy. You think about this rope unit. Hilt saves it. Oh, it looked like it was out of bounds. It was out. Definitely out of bounds. But Jaronski stays on the field. And Anish, you mentioned his journey playing so many different positions. I think of this Hopkins team and your initial attention goes to the Angeluses and the Degnons, but how this team is built is the middle of the field presence with guys like Jaronski and Martin and McDermott. That's the core of this, this unit in terms of their full field ability to hit. Big face off one by Callahan. That last Hopkins goal put an end to a 4-0 Syracuse run. Collison looks like something's coming from his uniform or his stick. Maybe some tape. Dagnon, left hand free, bounce shot, score. His fourth of the game. Until Syracuse understands that Garrett Degnon is not just another player in a Hopkins uniform when he is adjacent. He's going to continue to do this. Angelus with the head up. He sees the soft spot in the Syracuse defense and credit John Crawley for putting Degnon in different spots, right? He's a lefty sniper. He puts him up top in the middle of this 
offense, and Degnan continues to let it fly. We said it earlier, he ties Reardon and Brown for most consecutive games with a goal at Johns Hopkins. Here comes Stevens, right off the face-off win. The answer for the Orange. They didn't have Jake Stevens available against Army. They suffered on the wing. Tonight, they have him. They flourish. This is what a midfielder looks like. Someone who could scrap on defense, who could score in tight, who could gobble up a ground ball and make it count. Now, this game came out of a slumber in the second half, didn't it? 4-3 at halftime. Great ground ball play, Kilrain, the freshman, inside the power, the long pole leading the break. We're trading haymakers yes. now. You got a veteran in Stevens. You got a young buck in Kilrain who has incredible upside and versatility. You can play him low as a lockdown close defender put him on a wing and let him deal. What a pass by Kilrain. Vacuums it up, his head's up. So alert to understand that the eyes of the Syracuse defense are on him. Dylan Bauer camps out and makes it count. What do we have? Four goals now in less than a minute between these two teams. Callahan and Mullen tied up. We're going to get a flag. Procedure. Holding. Yep. Violation, it's going to be on Johns Hopkins. They'll get Callahan. Now, face-offs have been the one problem area for Hopkins today. Saying he's holding that right there on the violation. He's going to do 30. Syracuse is dominant, 20 of 28, and it's a two-headed monster with Cohen and Mullen. And then Callahan's out there, you, you find different cadences, and, and then your timing's off. A man-up chance now for Syracuse, 0 for 4 with the EMO. Keep in mind, too, you're going to have a trigger-shy Hopkins face-off guy with three violations. Be 30 seconds every time he jumps moving forward. Yeah, third face-off violation of the half. Stevens to Spolina. Kick saved by Erland. Spolina last year had 10 man-up goals among the national leaders. Along with Burt Whistle. Here's Stevens. He's been on one. Jake Stevens, another tally. He's taking over this game. He'll play a wing on a face-off. He'll take a shorty to a rack. He'll step down and make it rain. They're putting relentless pressure on Chase Erland, making him stand on his head. Owen Hiltz, Jake Stevens. Both played for John Posner at the Culver Academy back in the day. That man can coach. He understands how to teach offensive philosophy and principles. The heads up, and when they're on extra man, the ball flies. And with the game now starting to pick up in terms of scoring, Hopkins is going to have to find a way, even if they can't win a faceoff, to neutralize Syracuse and get the ball back in the first half. Cause turnovers, those well-timed slides. That was kryptonite for losing possession battles at times. In the second half, Syracuse offensively has made the adjustment. And you can't underestimate where we are in this game with the violations, too. So you're getting crushed on the face-offs. 
and you violated three times. So every violation now moving forward is 30 seconds. That changes the mindset for Callahan and anyone else who's taken a draw. Less than nine minutes to go. This Hopkins defense in half one was suffocating. Pat March, the offensive coordinator, and Gary Gate, the head coach, found a way to counter the high pressure, the quick slides. It's been with ball movement and crisp passing. Spolina feeding inside, backhanded shovel by Thompson. Six to shoot. English triggers against Avilas. Feet in front, Leo. Can he beat the shot clock again? Saved by Erlin, but it gives Syracuse a fresh 60. What a stop by Erlin. He's been dynamite. He has. The only thing I could say about Erlin is he's not making a ton of saves in gathering the ball. You're finding some rebounds. These high deflections, right? And it's really, a t it's a tough ask when, you, when you're seeing that kind of heat. But if you watch some of the goalies nationally, like Logan McNaney from Maryland is the best at actually making the stop and securing the ball. And this Hopkins defensive unit, they've been out there a lot. They've had to defend quite a bit in this second half. Do they get the takeaway? They do. Avilas looking for the punt return clear. He goes down hard. They'll let him play. Christian Muley with a monster hit. Raposo feeding the wing. Looking for Degnan and gets away. So defensively, you're digging in for a long possession. It looks like you might have something unsettled. And now you give it right back to Syracuse. Uh, th this defense has to be a little gassed right now. And you had your guy, too. Avilas, the Syracuse transfer. Muley. The Lehigh transfer. One Christian Mule, zero Brandon Avilas. Call that a Mule kick. <laughs> Stevens, a hat trick all in this second half. Working on Martin Hopkins top midi on the defensive side. Here's Hiltz. We come up on six and a half to go. For Syracuse, it's their first game this season away from home. Hopkins playing the third of three straight ACC opponents. They banked wins against UNC and Virginia. Erlin with the save, clamps down. And now can Hopkins try to get something going? A team that cleared so well against one of the best riding teams in Virginia has struggled in the clearing game today just 10 out of 16 it's been the Achilles heel it was their strength coming in today but Pete Milliman knows there's only limited options and opportunities moving forward who presses 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 they have the athletes in the middle of the field to be clean tonight they're 10 of 16 clearing the ball coming into today 92% They've blown opportunities. And Peter Milliman did tell us when we talked to him during the week, he said, as great as this program has been historically, it has been a minute since Hopkins has not been an underdog in big games. And this yeah. is certainly a big game. And now, as weird as it sounds, you're handling expectations. You're handling the target. You beat Virginia. Well, the noise, albeit positive, it amplifies it's all of new. a sudden. Hey, yes. Hopkins is back. Hopkins is a championship contender to go on the road and beat a Virginia team that's been one of the top two or three programs in the country for the last four or five years. And you did it down there. And tonight, you're down three. But Syracuse has had so many opportunities to put this game away. Chase Erland's been the, the difference maker. He's got 15 saves, but he's worked for every single one of them. Here comes Spolina, shot clock at 15. Six point game for Spolina, using the pick from Thompson, gets to the middle, draws attention, it's taken away. Zula cat momentarily. This is a big clear for Hopkins. Kilray, the freshman, giddying up. 
Back to Jaronski. Bouncer. Mark got a piece of it. Shot clock reset. Hopkins has possession. Those short stick defensive midfielders love the old school bouncer. And that drives goalies crazy. That is a hard shot for Will Mark to track. Melendez coming out of the box. Dagnon's got four. Here comes Collison against the short stick. His shot is blocked. He picks it up. Angelus had a great look, just didn't take that extra step to get the angle. Collison right now has the short stick matchup. 16 in black, had the four goals down in Charlottesville. He took that game over a week ago. He's got to be your guy right now. Melendez has a long pole on him because he's always in those right pieces. So as much as it's interchangeable, Angelus is, is the brains behind this offense on the field. He's got it now. Over to Melendez, who's without a point. Melendez had 30-plus goals last year, the Marquette transfer. Collison from the outside, and it's not the shot that you want. And if you're Melendez, after watching him late in the season and how strong of a dodger he, he was, if someone said, you're getting short-sticked in a game like this, you got to go to the rack. Yeah, he gave it up. Can they find Degnan, who's taken a team-high 13 shots, four goals, seven on cage. They do, and that is number five for the sixth-year senior and the two-time captain, Garrett Degnan. Anish, I'm going to say it till I'm blue in the face. You're playing with fire. You're playing with fire, <laughs> and you can't treat him adjacent when he's the next man in the rotation like you would any other player. This is Garrett Degnan. He will feast if he has that much time and room. You have to press out and defend him differently. When he's adjacent, slough to him, show more. Just make him think when he catches it, he's not gonna have the time to step and rip. And that's not the case for everyone else. His rules are different. Oh, what a great finish here at the Crown Lacrosse Classic in Charlotte, North Carolina. A city that continues to grow in its embrace of lacrosse. Angeles, big face-off win there for the Blue Jays to gain possession. And the shot clock era, you can't just sit on it. Can't, and as Quint would say many, many years ago, not every face-off is created <laughs> right. equally. And it's so true. In these pressure moments, you have the three violations. Hopkins finds a way to dig deep and get that possession. Degnan from that right wing. Alexo guarding Collison, who gets it back from Bauer. Now Angelus. 30 to shoot, plenty of time. Collison thought about it. Alexo trying to get into his body. Degnan looking for number six. There's the quick double on 40. Degnan to the cage. And a flag goes up. Will Hopkins go man up? You know what I'm impressed with, with Garrett Degnan is his counter move when teams are pressing out. I'm not a shooter, I can dodge yes. a little too. And, and that's the best way you can develop another aspect of your game if you're Garrett Degnan. Teams are gonna fly out to you, dip underneath. Got a slash on Syracuse, this is going to be a one minute penalty. The other player who's done a terrific job in his last year of having that counter game is Jacob Morin from Army. A lot of teams are pressing out at number 90 who shoots a zillion miles an hour. Now he has that counter where he's getting underneath defenders when they flash. Big extra man opportunity for the Blue Jays. Looking to close to within one. And they do! Collison, who had the four goals a week ago. He's such a big target, Anish. And if he catches it, he can handle pressure, too. He will soak a check, so when you find 16 in black inside, you can almost force feed him. The ball's spinning, and look who's behind. 
making the pass. Jacob Angelis to Matt Collison. The head is always up, the timing, he just takes another step upfield. That is beautiful execution by 23 and Black. He knows if he can just continue to go upfield, he'll get the eyes of the defense and find Collison inside. Blue Jays have only won nine of 30 faceoffs today. Cohn wins another one. Now trying to play keep away, and Gary Gates saw Cohn was in trouble. Before he got rid of the ball, he uses one of his two timeouts. 2.22 to go, fourth quarter. Once Desco and Petro. Before that, Simi and Zim. So what's interesting right now is you have plenty of time on the shot clock. You have Sam English who can go both ways. So if, if Syracuse loses the ball, you have one guy that could get in the hole and Sam English. Finn Thompson, not a defensive specialist. Michael Leo, not a defensive specialist. Leo is an attackman in high school. So Sammy English, if they turn the ball over, he has the responsibility to get back on defense. Look how far Deans presses out. He's Hopkins, top LSM. Only a one goal game. We come up on 90 seconds to play. Thompson. Marked by Martin. Now Spolina wearing the Fable 22. Eyeing up Smith. He gets a pick from Thompson. Spolina fires. That's coming back. It's turned away. Saved by Erlin again. And a new 60. So if you're Syracuse now, you can take this down. To about what 20 seconds 16 seconds Anish you could argue that that's better than a goal because it doesn't go back to the face off X well, now does Hopkins press out Dean's almost came away with the turnover Blue Jays don't have any timeouts neither do Syracuse Erlin is out of the cage Now Spolina near the midfield line. 22 on 22. Erlin looking to stay with him. Help coming from Smith. Spolina dumps it over to English. 35 seconds to go. 18 on the shot clock. You don't shoot if you're Syracuse unless there's like five seconds left now on Erlin the shot clock. Now Erlin gets back into the cage. Less than 10 to shoot. Leo trying to play keep away. Over to English. Two to shoot. English and that's off the stick of Mule and Syracuse will take that they can set their defense with 15 seconds This is a learning experience for Syracuse. They got beat on a quick whistle on a clear against Maryland You have to defend inside out Martin has it dislodged able to recover quickly up ahead Jaronski can't come up with it Syracuse with the ball 3.5 seconds to go Alexo throws it into the air, and the Orange get their biggest win of 2012.